Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. Today I'm just going to go through the dead outs that I had, uh, I removed from the yards over the last uh, week of warm weather. I was able to go through, I've had very few dead hives, um, and in, in fact, I've got a couple more still outside, but I've got, out of 126 hives, I've got nine deep boxes and one honey super here which was used as a brood chamber um, plus the various tops and bottoms and that sort of thing so i've got to go through this equipment and prepare it and what i'm going to do in this video is go through it brush it down or clean it up as much as is needed which is not very much and then organize those uh, used combs into categories of what I'm going to put into new new hives so when I start up some new hives with them this spring they're all ready to go and so you can adopt uh, various permutations of this uh, for cleaning out your own dead equipment and just to be ready I'll show you how to get be ready for either a package or a nuke in this video okay so let's start cleaning things up An old screen bottom board, there's a lot of rubbish in here. Just wanna clean up the dead stuff. Well, it's not dead stuff, what it is basically is the droppings through the cappings, old capping material, that sort of thing. You get a number of different critters living in these things sometimes. So by that I mean various bugs and sometimes the odd wax moth, but I'm not too worried about small amounts because a healthy hive is going to take, take care of everything. This is not an area where we have small hive beetles, so it's not a, a major issue for us up here in Maine. Thank goodness. Now I've got a, a relatively clean side and relatively dirty side. Basically the dirty side I can just let weather and after a while it'll be relatively clean. So what I'm simply going to do is just turn it around and this is ready to go. The candy board, so I'll be using the sugar and uh, dissolve this, so I'll uh, clean this up separately and I'll just dissolve the sugar again. Another dirty screen bottom board. There's a few dead beads on it. And it doesn't have to be spotless. If there's a few dead bees in there, the next, next colony is going to clean it right up. So we just have to make sure it's fairly clean. Another candy board. And this is reflective of the kind of bees that, the kind of colonies that died in my hives. Basically, I only put these on if I found the hive, I put these on in the fall if I thought the hive was very low on stores. And if it was very low on stores, it was probably very low on stores for a reason. But perhaps at the time I didn't have the time to do it. And so I wasted time and effort preparing them for the winter. What I really should have done is if I could see that they weren't likely to make it, I should have just shaken the bees out, let those bees combine with the other hives nearby and save myself the work of trying to feed them and coaxing them through the winter. Okay, so that's the tops and bottoms. So now what I'll do is start to go through the supers, the part you probably want to watch in the first place. So just start getting ready. To start with, I want a couple of empty supers ready to sort things into.
some of these combs really want to have extra wax added to them because they never really got the comb built. So frames like this, I'm going to re-wax the foundation so that they build the rest of this comb properly. So I'll be melting some wax and spreading it on here. So those will go to one side. Here is a perfectly good comb. Got chewed up a little bit by a mouse there. And a slight hint of mold on it. Not a problem at all. This is empty comb, which is ready to go. Now I've got a customer here, so excuse me one moment. So this comb has a bit of honey in it still, uh, uncapped honey, partially built. So this is going to go into a frame of honey and resources. There's no pollen in this, so this will be a honey frame. I will do that with these frames here, ones that need fixing can go elsewhere. Again, honey, open honey and some capped honey. So there's plenty of capped honey here and some open honey here. It's still, nothing is fermenting there. So this was cured honey but never got sealed. If it was uncured and the water content was too high, it would smell like alcohol because by now it would have been fermenting. But it's not. Okay, yes, I'm shooting a video right now. Okay, I'll, I'll stop part way through and I'll come in and join you. Okay, bye. Being invited in for a cup of coffee. Okay, now, there's pollen in here. So there's some capped honey. There's some pollen underneath the uncapped honey and a little bit of uh, dead bees here so just brush them off and this bit of mold here it's not going to matter at all the bees will clean that right up so as this has some pollen in it i'm going to save this i want a third box so that's going to go into this box as such this box will have pollen resources in it Looks like just honey. There's probably pollen underneath a lot of these cells, but I can't see it very well.
Unfortunately, what I've got in the uh, other storage area from the fall is lots of empty supers, uh, deep supers that I extracted honey from. So I have lots of drawn comb that's empty. And what I have here is lots of drawn comb that has a fair amount of uh, honey in it. I wouldn't worry about bees in there, that should be absolutely fine. There's an empty comb, tiny bit of pollen, but still not worth. It's not what I'd call a frame of resources. It's an empty one. Again, bit of mold, not an issue. What you can see in there is a bit of mold, dead bees, that sort of thing. The bees will clean this out without any problem at all. Likewise on this side of the frame. They'll clean that out without any issues at all. needs recoping. Hey! Hello! How are ya? I'm good, thank you. Just one second. I have decided... One second. Okay, this frame has quite a bit of pollen in it. So this is going to the pot be resources, very good resources for a nuke. Where is that done? I have to reorganize. Pollen, pollen and honey. Let's have a look. The orange cells are pollen. So for those of you who have not seen pollen in the frames before, the bees 
fill the cells about three quarters of the way with pollen mixed with honey and that's how they preserve it and underneath these cap cells here is probably quite a bit of pollen as well so under the cap cells it's full of honey but it's only about a quarter full of honey all the stuff below the honey is pollen and that's the protein reserves for the bees getting hard to do these videos. So many people phoning that time of year. Hello. Someone from Pakistan wants to sell me equipment. Whilst I was going through some of the other boxes here, I found that this colony here died because it went queenless and you can tell this because look how those cells are sticking out from the frame all these this capped brood here is drone brood there's drones coming out of the cell here this is a sign that the queen probably died if it was going if the queen was becoming a drone layer you would see worker brood mixed in with the drone brood but in fact all we've got here is drone brood so in all probability we lost the queen in this hive which had quite a bit of honey in it we lost the queen in this hive late in the fall the new queen did not succeed in mating um, if it was late in the fall or she never came back from mating and as a result this hive went into the end of the winter queenless um, or we lost the queen during the middle of the winter, but I'd say it's more likely that we lost it somewhere uh, at the beginning. There were some attempts at rearing a new queen here, um, but basically this hive went queenless. Um, and we had laying workers in there at the very end of the fall, another start of an attempt of at a queen cell. But basically this hive did not die from mites or... Um, anything that was avoidable, this was a late loss of a queen in the fall, which was probably too late to be spotted. Okay, so I'll not go through all the equipment here. What I'll do now, though, is I will show you how I would set up a, a colony, uh, or that the first super for stocking. Um, there's no point in going through all these things and just see repetition of me looking through frames. So what I'll do is I'll show you how I would set up uh, supers for different conditions. So the first box I'll show you is if you're looking to add a second deep super onto an overwintered single colony. So what we'd do is put some foundation on the outside. Now, I need to build a lot of foundation. I need to build out combs all the time. So I will tend to put in a lot of foundation to try and get combs built. So there's some combs of foundation on the outside. Then what I'll do is put some honey in there. A bit of honey there bit of honey and then I'll put empty cones in the middle so empty combs in the middle combs that have been drawn out but have just lots of space in here if they're a little bit moldy that's absolutely fine there so when we put this on top of the um, a cluster of bees they will move up from the cluster below into these empty these four 
five combs in the middle, the four combs in the middle. There's plenty of room for the queen to come up and lay in these four. There's some honey on either side of those. And as they expand, they'll eat up the honey and they'll start to draw comb in the outside edges. So this setup is also really good for starting up a package of bees. Uh, again, with a package of bees, they would, uh, you'll probably, if you're a beginner, you'll be starting with just frames of foundation, in which case you're not having the, the luxury of having drawn out comb. However, if you've got a colony that's died out or a friend has given you some empty combs, again, this is a very good setup. Empty space in the middle where the queen can get right to work laying in that empty space. Some food resources on either side and then comb the space to build. The only difference I'd probably do for a package is if I had the opportunity, I would probably put frames of pollen um, resources instead of honey here because we're going to be feeding sugar syrup anyway but the pollen resources they're really valuable uh, to any expanding hive. With a nuke that's a little bit different if you're starting to if you're putting these empty frames in a nuke what I would typically do remember the nuke you're going to be receiving the four four brand new combs full of brood and that sort of thing. So again, with a nuke, I've got space for five combs on either side, and I would, I would not put much honey in them. Frames that are maybe half full of honey on the outside edges here, uh, better still, frames that are full of, partly full of honey, partly full of pollen. And then we're leaving space, and I would only set it up with four frames in to start with, so I can put my five new combs in the middle. And then what I'll do is I'll push them together when I've got my five new combs in there. And I might put a frame of foundation on the outside, and a frame of drawn comb here that they can expand into quickly. But the key thing is don't fill this space up with honey. If you've got a dead colony, don't fill the expansion space up with honey. If you do, they don't have room to expand. And if you put a nuke or a package in there, you've got a situation where you've got lots of honey, but they've got nowhere to go. Um, and so don't overcrowd your new colony with honey. Two frames of honey, I would say, is the maximum that you need and I would very often do it with uh, none or one um, uh, depending on whether I'm feeding or not and of course with a new new startup hive I'd almost always be feeding but if you've got stored honey in there it's kind of in the way of their expansion so I've got a bit of uh, comb to work my way through I'm about halfway through those supers that have dead out they say I've only got nine supers to go through, but that's what I'm going to do. Sort them out into empty comb, combs of honey and combs of pollen. Where I've got the opportunity to, I'll put a comb of pollen with any new nuke that I'm starting off. Uh, so when I'm starting off a new nuke, as you'll see later on, I might start it off with two frames of brood, a frame of pollen, uh, maybe one that's sto one of the frames of pollen that's a dead out and certainly a frame of fresh pollen with fresh honey in there which is full of bees but that's a story for later later videos i hope you found that helpful if you did please press that subscribe button i'm peter cowan the bee whisperer see you next time